Bienvenidos a Disrupt Everything, podcast series by Isla García. Reinventate a ti mismo y cambia lo que más te importa. Hi everyone, I was in, I am in the monastery in uh, Shaolin Temple, Europe. Just finishing the five-day program Monastery on Time, and I just finished an interview with the Shaolin Master Shifu Shi Heng Yi on the art of self mastery, on the art of life mastery, on the art of uh, self knowledge, on the art of awareness. We talk about love, forgiveness, compassion, life advice. A really profound and wise interview with. Uh, the, the headmaster of Shaolin Temple, and now this interview has a, is a bit of experiment, as a special one, because I, Shifu and I were speaking in English, but we were at the end of each question. I did a small translation in Spanish, so don't get alarmed. It's not that I got crazy. It's just that I tried to do a small summary of the question and the reply and the answer for the people who doesn't speak English and they don't speak English and they want to know about the Shifu and so I wanted to bridge, bridge or close the gap uh, because they were in the first interview with Shifu that you can get in the description there were so many there were so many so many questions and so many requests of people that wanted to to have the interview in Spanish so now I'm gonna say it in Spanish so uh, pardon me and correct me if I'm wrong or if I get uh, lost in translation, but I did my best, so organic. Hola a todos, eh, soy Isra García, desde el Templo Shaolin Europa, en, justo al terminar el programa eh, Monastery on Time, justo al terminar, bueno, hoy es el último día, y justo acabo de terminar la entrevista con Shifu, con nuestro maestro, Shi Heng Yi, en el arte del self-mastery, del autoconocimiento, de la sabiduría interior, de amor, compasión, eh, la maestría de la vida y esta entrevista es un poco peculiar porque a pesar de ser en inglés y en castellano perdón, a pesar de ser en inglés pregunta y respuesta, al final de cada pregunta hemos hecho un experimento donde traduzco y hago un resumen de la respuesta de Xi Yi, del maestro primero la pregunta y luego la respuesta, un resumen lo mejor que he podido tanto como he podido para no hacer la entrevista larga y capturar la esencia de su respuesta. No es la misma, no tiene la misma esencia, no es una traducción literal, pero lo hago para que todos aquellos que no podéis acceder al contenido en inglés tengáis al menos una píldora de valor por cada una de las respuestas. Así que deseo que cause valor, que os aporte, que os enriquezca y que podáis aprovecharlo como lo he aprovechado y como lo aprovechan aquellos los que tienen la posibilidad de acceder en el inglés. Así que nos vemos aquí, nos vemos en cualquier sitio y el viaje continúa. Disrupt everything. Si algo merece la pena, hazlo en exceso. Have a structure without structure. This is one of the teachings that most capture my attention these days here in uh, Shaolin Temple Europe in the Monastery on Time program with uh, Headmaster of Shaolin Temple Shifu Shi Heng Yi for second time. Thank you and welcome to this Everything podcast and web series. Uh, this is a video but it's also a podcast. We recording here from Shaolin Temple. The second time we we were joking and we hope uh, this time doesn't rain. At least we don't have the laptop. And um, I have the pleasure and the honor to interview again Shi Heng Yi on uh, self mastery, self knowledge, life mastery, Qigong, Kung Fu, Shaolin arts. And uh, for those who are listening or viewing the interview, watching the interview for this time. The, sec the first part uh, you can access in the description, you can access in the cards in the video. It's a one hour long or more than one hour long interview when we address uh, Shifu's beginnings, when he came in Shaolin Temple, how everything got started. We give you, we give you some background information 
because we are going to take the interview a little bit ahead of what we what we were the last time. And um, Shifu, uh, I want to start with uh, this first thing, the, the quote, uh, have a structure, but no structure, or have a no structure within the structure. Yeah. Um, what, so is it, is it linked with have discipline, but with not without discipline? Or how do you refer to this? Uh, because I believe it's inside of the method that you teach. What do you want, what do you mean exactly with have a structure, but not a structure? Okay, so... Uh, I mentioned it before very often already that people come to the monastery or want to know more about monastic life because maybe they feel something is missing in their average day that they are living or maybe they have the feeling that there's something inside this way of looking at the things which can support them in their in their lifetime to just move forward sometimes if you have the feeling you're stuck and at the same time buddhist teaching very very often it's also known it is the method to help you see the things how they are now why would you invest time to to try out a method to see the things how they are because to bring it and make it very very simple as long as there are too many restrictions on you it doesn't matter what it is when you feel like something is restricting you then apparently you would say I don't feel free so somehow in this world everybody wants to feel free so freedom is something in many different ways no matter how you express it but apparently this freedom is a very very important word but now second time you spend here in our monastery for example you have a very strong structure yeah, which means you cannot decide what time you want to wake up you cannot decide at what times you are eating your food you also cannot decide what times we make the training inside the training you cannot decide what type of uh, exercises we are doing because everything has a time everything has a very very clear structure um, in this place so that means people sometimes look for freedom but they come to a place where probably only the prison <laughs> maybe has more restrictions but besides that here everything is regulated very very much so now you might say yes but why would I come here and, and do all of this why do I put such an external and artificial structure on top of my life why should I do this yeah and now this is for example one area where the sentence that you that you mentioned before to have no structure in the structure yeah and what does it mean it means to learn that at this moment as long as you are here in this place the ones uh, that are taking care of this monastery they are looking that you keep the structure this is why it's called also it's an external discipline yeah so we watch over that everybody here keeps the structure so but what happens if you you are not in this place anymore or the one the people from here are gone so what happens if either the people here are not there anymore to watch over you keeping the structure or at the same time you are going to leave this place return back to your uh, normal life and then what is happening then with keeping up the structure well the external structure is not there anymore the external structure is is gone but hopefully there is something that you're going to develop 
from yourself uh, that you realize that actually there is also a very very nice part and a good part about being here and having this external structure and what is it for example you don't need to think too much during the day you don't need to take your own decisions because sometimes this can be very uh, very difficult if from the moment you wake up until the evening you're all the time is the mind is between taking decisions yeah you wake up you need to take decisions what to wear yeah then you need to take decisions what is your first meeting or whatever yeah so the idea of having such an external structure is simplify your life simplify it and which means if you do not have to take a choice in terms of take a decision that or this this or that you don't have to make it so what happens is and what remains is it's the way of no choice you learn to live a life like you have no choice you come to this monastery and yeah to hardly express it it means it doesn't matter what type of expectations somebody has if he comes here the reality is going to be you get the most benefit out of this stay here if you completely open up yourself and just do it's just the main part is the doing part and not the oh no maybe this oh i don't know no at the moment i want to do something else and should i do this now or should i maybe get later it's all taken away why because there's the external structure which is preventing you from taking your own decisions as long as you're here so and now and how long do you have to keep up such way of living first i think it's very very helpful if you also look at the benefits that a structure gives to your life so what are the benefits that making your own structure making your own daily schedule making the same wake up times yeah after wake up time the first five minutes brush the teeth yeah the next 25 minutes make breathing exercises yeah then the next half an hour make my coffee and then i sit down and answer the emails so this is also like a structure an artificial structure but also comes together now with the saying perfection comes from repetition so that means every day you have this structure and so the moment will come where it's just become very easy for you you don't even need to think about it anymore because it has become an integral part of your life so this goes along with the saying the best that can happen to you is if you are integrating no matter what practices doesn't have to be shaolin practices doesn't matter can be playing the instrument or doing anything the best would be if you do not consider it as something you must do but it's just becoming a structural and integral part of your lifetime just like brushing the teeth you don't need to think about brushing the teeth it's automatic you wake up you do it you go to bed you do it it has become a part of your life and now if it is something about training if it is something about calming yourself if it is something about learning to observe yourself better the more you make it without somebody telling you you must make it then it means there is no hard structure where you feel it's limiting you still there is a structure but it's a positive aspect that helps you yeah, and this is like the sentence uh, that you can understand for example to learn and have no structure inside the structure one of the, the things we were going to say uh, we were explaining here in the interview is trying to also uh, give a brief review in spanish for those who doesn't uh, speak english oh that's going to be a long one long one uh, but i'm gonna <laughs> gonna <t> <laughs> 
I'm gonna make a summary. So the first question, la primera pregunta que le he preguntado, le, le he formulado al maestro, eh, jefe de maestros y maestro en el Templo Shaolin en Europa, es tener una, tener una estructura dentro de la estructura. Lo cual quiere decir que dentro de todo el planning, dentro de todo lo que hay fijo, poder crear tu propio tu propia estructura dentro de lo que hay fijo. De esa manera puedes desarrollarte dentro de la estructura, dentro de lo fijo, sin estar en la rigidez. Lo cual nos lleva a la disciplina, que es ser disciplinado sin ser rígido. Y esto, como decía, lo puedes traducir en tu día a día, en los entrenamientos, y hablaba de que en el templo Shaolin hay una estructura, pero tú dentro de esa estructura puedes crear tu propia estructura. Eso es lo que queríamos decir con la primera pregunta. Esto se resume en castellano. So, the second question, y luego traduciré la pregunta y la respuesta. Um, so, does this mean that uh, so discipline leads to freedom? Not automatically, but discipline. So to to keep the mental structure that you have given to yourself. Yeah, we are. There are always two things that you can maybe make it easier to understand. There can be external discipline. There can be internal discipline. There can be a very hard external structure. At the same time, you can also have an internal structure. Yeah? The difference between external and internal is always for the internal one, you are the one who is responsible for it. Yeah? And for the external one, that can mean you do it because you are forced to do it, because I am forcing you to do it. Yeah? Ultimately, this is your life. It's your life, it's your lifetime, and you have choice to decide how you want to live this life. So the best would be that no matter how you call it, discipline or structure or freedom or whatever, it normally should all of these things come from yourself. Yeah, so this is number one. So. Le he preguntado que si la disciplina lleva a la libertad y dice que no automáticamente. Hay dos tipos de disciplina o dos tipos de estructura, interna o externa. La externa es la que viene del exterior y te fuerza a hacerlo sí o no y la interna es la que viene de ti, la que te da la elección que últimamente te puede llevar a la libertad. Shifu, you were saying that uh, you were sharing with me when we saw this time uh, I think in, on Monday that uh, you were traveling a lot to, to do trainings corporate uh, like you were going to Dubai, Dubai you were going to another countries Luxembourg and um, what what have you learned sharing these arts this culture these teachings with other people uh, in corporate in Yeah, in business, in uh, events in a uh, foreign country which the culture is different than, than this one. What are the biggest takeaways that, or, or in people? On okay. So, if you follow along the ways of teaching or what I normally publicly share, you will realize uh, very much that it has never been my purpose to share the idea only of strengthening your body with the Shaolin arts in order to fight anyone. It's not my purpose. If you want to learn how to fight using the Shaolin principles, using the Shaolin martial arts, there are other masters out there that can share this better than I do. Yeah, so for me, I started young, just practicing because of the physical training. Yeah, it made me become strong. It made me become more flexible. It made me become faster. It made me 
feel healthy it made me feel vital so there are many physical aspects um, where you can benefit from this but throughout all the years especially when it started to also meet other people especially then I realized that the value that all of these different ways of investigating yourself investigating your body investigating the way of how you are thinking about things so when you walk through the city what everything goes on in the mind also you watch people you didn't meet before so what happens so emotionally sometimes so this idea of walking through this lifetime and observing a lot this can bring out so many benefits that first of all you will be able to benefit yourself but second of all also then use all of this knowledge and benefit the people that are also surrounded by you and that's why the greatest part about these methods is that these methods don't care about what culture you come from they also don't care about what position you have in in your business yeah they don't care if you're male or if you're female they don't care what what uh, what preferences of whatever you have it's all unimportant doesn't matter what religion you have because this is not what <laughs> the core of all of this is ultimately you are we are all humans and there are mechanisms inside this human being which is the same more or less everywhere in all parts of the world not just right now 21st century yeah always been and so this is why I think what is all of these things that we have in common and why are there things that make us different and to observe this gives you a better idea a better understanding of your place on this earth and people are expressing their creativity their sense of beauty their sense of strength people express it in different ways it must not always be in terms of martial arts because that's not what it's about not everybody in this world can learn martial arts this is not the message but if there is something that you want to make it grow if there is something that you feel like it gives you energy you like to to make it grow you like to watch it grow you want to be proud of what you have may be created then there are some things about the human you need it doesn't matter who we talk about at the moment in this world whoever is famous famous doesn't matter in regards of what yeah, famous because of money be famous because of skills because of a sportsman because of some achievements I don't think any of them reached that level without having some type of what we call right now discipline yeah and these are just normal things so all of these people somehow maybe they never use this word discipline but if you watch at their daily structure the way of how they're thinking the way how they are behaving the way how they are dealing with situations when it's getting difficult even if they don't take this word into their mouth you can see it they express something they're expressing a very specific sometimes yeah maybe in in ancient language I would call it now they're expressing a specific spirit strong spirit a powerful spirit a wise spirit yeah and based on how you live your life based on that 
I think um, this life is granting you. Yeah, this life is granting you for the input that you are giving into this life. Yeah, and I think this is at the moment so the understanding why sharing these principles of life. Yeah, it's again, yeah, it's just principles. Nobody needs to believe in them. You don't need to use them. <laughs> you can do what you want. <laughs> yeah, that is the freedom of this life. The only thing is every action will have a consequence. And now you just figure out for yourself what type of consequences can you live with and what type of consequences would you let's say appreciate to have in the future mm. and that's what it's all about yeah it must not be <laughs> too bloomy too philosophical that's what it's about to use all methods everything available in this world at the moment in order to make the best of your lifetime finished you don't need to talk about enlightenment you don't need to talk about going somewhere and meeting the Tao, it doesn't matter at the moment. First thing is, find a way to as quick as possible enjoy the lifetime that you have and then extend the number of these days where you have this feeling. Yeah, and if this is the goal you want to give to yourself, why to follow such teachings? Well, there it is. So. Mi pregunta a Shifu ha sido qué ha aprendido en todos estos años viajando por toda Europa, por eh, Dubai, por otros países, enseñando y compartiendo la cultura y todo lo que todo lo que enseña desde el templo Shaolin y todo lo que ha aprendido de su vida. Como como en esta parte lo voy a hacer corto, es él habla que no no enseña su cómo hacerte fuerte en las artes marciales, cómo ser más ágil, cómo ser más rápido, sino lo que defiende es la cómo extender la vida, cómo hacerla más valiosa, cómo hacer que cuente, porque como dice, cada acción tiene una consecuencia y lo que hay que darnos cuenta es de esa consecuencia y cómo queremos que sea la próxima consecuencia, porque si lo que queremos vivir aquí es una vida más completa, necesitamos unos principios que mucha gente, muchos grandes, muchos artistas, muchos eh, grandes deportistas tienen en común y él le llama un espíritu, como una disciplina, algo que son unos fundamentos que todo el mundo pone en, en práctica. Eso mismo es lo que defiende dentro de sus enseñanzas. Como siempre, hago una versión resumida de la explicación de Shifu para las personas que, están teniendo, que, que no pueden acceder a una entrevista en castellano. Aquí hacemos como, estamos haciendo un primer experimento. Así que disculpar si no cubro toda la, respuesta, toda la respuesta, pero sí lo más importante o con aquello con lo que decido quedarme. Hey Shifu, um, so you were you were sharing uh, with us about the principles and also the values, the, the Shaolin values. So can you can you elaborate on on, on the values and and the, uh, why why the, those are important? depends on important for who people other people say other things are more important in life yeah and this is also something to take into consideration there is a saying in the buddhist teachings it's not just about even if you try to talk the truth it's not wise and it's not always helpful if you are talking the truth but in the wrong times yeah so that means if somebody is hungry his biggest problem at the moment is he didn't eat for one week he is hungry you don't need to give him principles how to live life yeah you don't need to give him any wise and philosophical teachings you need to give him bread to eat. Okay? So that means, first of all, 
every human sometimes is simply in a different state of need he needs something different so and as long as you don't have a certain yeah i call it maybe a little bit as long as you don't have a certain level of stability of your life it's becoming very difficult to then say yes uh, i will use just these principles because somebody said so the principles are very valuable but first of all you need to have such a basic a basic line of stability how at the moment you are living your life okay once you have it then the question is like this in a way again it's about external and internal external means yeah i have time i have enough financial possibilities so what are you going to do right now you travel the world you go out and maybe you learn different courses you visit a retreat you visit a workshop you visit a seminar you buy a book or anything like this in order to get a new skill yes to get a new skill now when we talk about virtues right now or guiding principles it's a little bit different that means if let's say we talk about gratitude or thankfulness very easy thankfulness okay there are people in this world where you would say he's a really thankful person he's a very grateful person and other people you look at you would say mm -mm, he doesn't have it why he doesn't have it why the one doesn't have it and why the one has it you take another one one has discipline other one does not have discipline one of your friends you know he's very very loyal to you he has always been the friend of you yeah, even you made mistakes he was always your friend other friends you had you were in problems they were afraid they run away okay so why some people have this type of attitude and other people don't have it i don't think it's something that you are born with and that's it I don't think it is something that you are born with and then afterwards yeah some people have it some don't I don't think so but if it's not coming from birth then there must be a way how to develop such things inside a character so and now just think about a moment <laughs> you could be the person you could be that being who is going to create the perfect human in the world what type of behavior what type of attitude would such a human have he needs respect respecting his life respecting your life respecting the life of everybody and everything and every being which is alive respect yes makes sense yes a thankful person once again at the same time to build something up having patience maybe having the appropriate amount of will power sometimes if things are happening that are coming unplanned and you don't know what's the answer right now what should i do enough courage to still <laughs> go go in the dark even if you haven't been there yeah so that means there are different virtues okay so and some of them right now i just mentioned and 
in if you practice the Shaolin art or in the Shaolin temple we know them as the so-called virtues of martial arts yeah? it's a wuda it's called yeah, sometimes it's 10 virtues sometimes it's 14 virtues it really depends on um, how deep you go and it's not an invention even of just of uh, of the Shaolin temple but you look at many many different uh, cultures also the Japanese yeah, when you talk about the codex of the samurai also them had the codex the conduct of behavior so why because once again this is against something like it's a guideline it's a guideline you put on yourself you keep on the mind it's an idol but it's not an idol of another person who lives out there the idol is yourself but the best <laughs> version of yourself this is the best idol and so what you need to do every day is simply by okay did I behave at the moment as a thankful person the way how I just talked to to him or her right now was that uh, a respectful way of talking to him or her yeah or the way how I handled the situation right now um, was I courageous or not yeah and that means once you have for example such guidelines then we think it is a way how you can improve your character in such a way that you bring out a very gentle and nice person about yourself you gonna benefit from it people around you gonna benefit from it and yes perfect this is what you can do if you want to change the world change yourself first change the way how people around you feel then already you have made small impact yeah you don't need to change the world trying to fix the problems on the other side of the world if at the moment you uh, still have a lot of issues in your very close surroundings yeah. no problem you can donate if somewhere is an earthquake I'm not talking about this yeah I'm um, talking about really the approach to to keep up this mirror in front of you and watch yourself and stop blaming people like <laughs> always searching for an excuse searching for somebody why he did this and he did that and they are all responsible why I feel so bad well they don't feel bad you feel bad so it's nothing that they have a problem you have the problem <laughs> Sifu le he preguntado eh, qué opina, por qué son tan importantes las virtudes, eh, las virtudes Shaolin, los, los principios. Y realmente el resumen es para que realmente la persona importante seamos nosotros y que nosotros nos cambiemos a nosotros mismos, que nos miremos a nosotros como nuestro propio ídolo, para que luego podemos cambiar cómo nos comunicamos, cómo actuamos, cómo nos comportamos con la gente de nuestro alrededor y eso cambie cómo ellos se sienten y entonces crear un impacto. Esas virtudes se pueden encontrar en muchos sitios y aquí hemos hablado del respeto, de la gratitud, de, dar las, de, de la disciplina, del autocontrol, de la paciencia, pero es lo que crea a la mejor persona. Entonces es, como dice, preguntarte cada día cómo puedo ser más... más eh, ¿Cómo puedo apreciar más? ¿Cómo puedo ser más disciplinado? ¿Cómo puedo intentar mejor? ¿Cómo puedo crecer más y ser una mejor persona? Que al fin y al cabo de eso se trata. Resumen de, de su respuesta. Eh, Shifu, I, I've, I've noticed and a lot of people in the, in, the question, in the comments in the last interview and someone spoke, eh, just, I've noticed that when you, when you reply, 
and when you are going to add a point or when you are going to experience something you just chill stop have a have a, an office space and then you reply and that's really not usual on uh, maybe you've seen this also in is we talk so fast we just maybe are thinking more quicker than we talk so is this something you've developed for yourself is something that you've work on it is something that comes out naturally it's something that really is one of the things that the first time I saw your your videos your interviews really grab my attention because it just slows the wall down and then just go so um, in very simple terms <laughs> I would really say I had many teachers who always taught me <laughs> think first then do think first yeah so there's also something which happens uh, I don't know I'm not under pressure yeah I'm not under pressure I don't put myself under pressure and because I'm not under pressure that's why I can just <laughs> look inside myself and see if I have the answers or not because sometimes I don't have answers to everything. So, if I just directly reply because I want to reply, it is not the way how I do it and it's not the way what I think how you should do it. Because it's very subjective. If you want to answer it, then it's very subjective. At the moment, once again, everything I'm telling you right now, this interview, the last interviews, the last 50 interviews that I had, this, everything that I'm saying there, it's not my invention. It's not my invention. People before me already talked about it people at this moment are also talking about it but use other words people in the future are going to talk about it and are adapting the way of how they speak and what vocabulary they are using they are going to adapt it to the way and cultural um, necessities that there will be in the future but what is it that they are channeling They are channeling things that are simply observations of this life. I don't need to reinvent it. I don't need to think about what is the answer you want to hear, what is the answer people want to hear. I don't care about what people want. I answer you the question. And in order to answer you the question, I just have to look inside inside this life and see what type of experiences what type of situations did I have did I had what situations could I witness from other people where I can observe the answer for your question yeah and then because and this is for example when I uh, when I try to think when I try to stay calm this is what I try to see in my mind and then I just um, tell you what I what I see I just tell you what the observation is uh, yes and this is why I think it's very often a very very helpful way and you realize very often also amongst the martial art practitioners and in the field of the martial arts 
you know you can feel the people who know and the ones that know it feels like it's not coming from them nobody's in possession of the truth nobody's in possession of these methods and therefore I can only share with you what as far as my experience has brought me that's why I don't know all the answers sometimes I don't have answers and yeah but at the end I just really think that especially now when it comes to sharing such things yeah before you start to start sharing something before you start to share something what is wrong with so many people better say you don't know and and don't share yeah before you share something wrong better don't share and this is why i think it's yeah. Que tiene una, un rasgo del que me he dado cuenta de que han hecho muchos comentarios en las redes, en los vídeos de YouTube y que si pasas con él un tiempo o ves sus vídeos, te das cuenta y es que antes de responder tomaba su pausa, toma un tiempo y al rato responde, responde y su respuesta ante por qué hace eso o, o, o si le fluye naturalmente, lo ha aprendido, lo ha practicado dice que no está bajo presión, que no se siente bajo presión. Entonces, eh, toma el tiempo que considera necesario para responder. Y tal como su maestro le ha enseñado, piensa antes de hacer. Dice que nadie tiene eh, la posesión de la verdad y que antes de, de compartir algo, busca las experiencias, eh, pensamientos, opiniones que le han llevado a estar en esa situación en la que él puede responder y busca si tiene una respuesta apropiada y si no tiene esa respuesta apropiada no responde, porque dice que antes de responder algo que sea equívoco, mejor tener la humildad de decir, no sé And Shifu, chulas questions to, to end up to, to not make it very long <laughs> One is I love to know your thoughts about an experience, if possible with uh, with love, compassion, and forgiveness. What can you say about it? I mean, how do you see love? How do you see compassion? How do you see forgiveness? Have you experienced in yourself? You so, I didn't see, like, I want, I want to know this, your take on this. Okay, now it's getting <laughs> very romantic, yes? <laughs> no. Okay, where is it coming? Where, where is it coming from? How do you know that the person has compassion? Or how do you know you have compassion? How do you know you love? How do you know you love someone? How do you know these things? I know this time you have compassion because the interview now is very long and you're staying here. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's not a question of knowing. It's a question of feeling. When we talk about love, when we talk about compassion, it is something you feel. Yeah, it's like, just for an example now, yes? I love you. I love you. I have compassion with you. <laughs> yeah, no, exaggerated now, yeah, but it doesn't matter what you say. It's not the words that you tell to somebody I love you and I feel compassion with you or the same like uh, uh, thank you for everything you've done to me and this is why gratefulness thankfulness 
compassion love sometimes those four we are also regarding as qualities of the heart qualities of the heart so how do you know that you have this type of quality because you feel it and where do you feel it it's amongst the strongest feelings a human I think can have yeah and from where would I say does it radiate from the heart from the center and what is love it is a massive expansion from the center which is embracing everything Some people say love is God, okay? Makes sense, fits. It expands from the center and embraces everything. Which means it's everywhere. Okay? That would fit very good. The ultimate truth of this universe is ultimate love. Okay? If you express it like this, also fits to me. So what is this feeling of love? You feel connected. You feel connected to humans. You feel connected to this place. You feel connected to the nature. You even feel connected to people you don't know. Even if they live on the other side of the world. You feel connected to them. You feel that on the earth we are connected. You feel in our solar system we are connected. You even feel in case there would be some type of beings on the Mars, you even feel for them. Because the connection doesn't end. And as long as this expression of love, if you talk about the type of love which is still excluding anything, anyone, or, s or any, yeah, this is, n this is, I would maybe find another word for it. But this is not the one where I think is related to that quality that you are supposed to develop in your heart. Yeah. So on the one side it's this very deep and strong feeling of connectivity to everything. Yeah? This is the one thing. And now because you are connected and because you are connected now and you see somebody is crying there and you see somebody is suffering there and you see somebody has a hard time it doesn't matter because of what you feel also something inside this connectivity where you would actually like to raise all of them up to get out of that state where you see them in so in this now how I would express um, in simple terms what compassion is about and why they are so closely related first you, be, you are connected because you're connected now you've now you feel more yeah so and these are these are those two and now how does now in those constellation does forgiveness forgive let go yeah how does this in the way fit in well yeah forgive let go forget forget about what let go of what forgive forget and let go of what is stopping you from connecting <laughs> what is stopping me from connecting watching through the world only through this body this is what stops you from connecting 
thinking that this is everything that matters. You yourself are stopping you from connecting. The more I think this complete life, this complete universe is only about you, the less you're connected. Le he preguntado a Shifu que me gustaría saber qué piensa sobre el amor, sobre la compasión y sobre el perdón. Y la respuesta, sumario, resumen, es conexión. Todo está conectado. Desde el amor es, un, es una expansión del centro hacia cualquier cosa, cualquier ser, desde cualquier concepto o término. Si eso es así lo que sientes por cualquier persona que pueda estar pasando un mal momento, un, un mal rato, un obstáculo, es compasión. ¿Y dónde, dónde conecta con, la, con el perdón? En el dejar ir todo aquello que te para de poder ver que hay más allá de tu propio ser. Dejar marchar todo aquello que te conecta con absolutamente todo. Esto sería la respuesta resumen y la otra Mejor tradúcelo porque es espectacular. And I was saying that the other part you better translate it because it's <laughs> La last uh, question Shifu is for for everyone who is listening this video and uh, is having a hard time, is criticizing himself, is his worst enemy. So is you know is people that uh, is losing you know their houses, is people that are having no faith, these people that are having no hope, these people that are is even the ones who are unhappy and they don't know because they are in so trapped in the wheel. So what's your what's your what what are your words to, to live because correct me if I'm wrong, I saw that what I've been teached here, what I've learned is be in your center. Create your center. And it's somehow the seat of self mastery. Uh, so, what what would be your message to to people to be on um, to connect with themselves, to connect with their centers, to be this their own master, to be their own idol, they be, to be their own leaders? First day of training this week. Yeah, I told you what what is it all about? It's about know where you are standing. Know where you're standing. Accept accept the way, accept the difficulties, accept the limitations, accept the pain, accept the things you could not do on the first day feel inside yourself I have problem I definitely have problem with stretching I have problem with stamina I have problem with running now I have problem with push-ups doesn't matter what first day is realize where you are standing and after realize where you're standing accept it for yourself accept it for yourself that at the moment it's like this no need to find no need to find excuses or anything to to talk you out of it yeah you are not good enough in this in this in this area okay then at the moment if i compare myself to others it's true um this is how it is at the moment so number one so why is it important that first of all you must accept the situation where you're in and must see really where you are standing because if this first initial starting point is already wrong whoever is going to support you and try to give you guidance he doesn't know in which direction he should put you because he doesn't know where you are standing so before we even start to walk in any direction, yeah, I cannot tell you, you must walk more north 
if I don't know where are you located. I cannot just say you must walk more north. To another person, I say, okay, but you, you my friend, <laughs> you must walk more south. Because he is from another starting point than you. Yeah? So that means, in order that somebody can give you guidance and that you are also really progressing, make sure for yourself first that you accept where you are standing. You accept all the mistakes that you have done until now and you accept the consequences that you need to live with at the moment based on everything that in the past maybe you did that you regret. Okay, Make it one time. Make it one time, make it become really strong, start crying whatsoever, so many ways of releasing this. Yeah? But the first point is accept. Yes, life is unfair, welcome. Welcome in it. Boom. That's the starting point. So, and now from there, think first. <laughs> think first. How would I like to see myself in the future? Break it down into small steps that you are that you think you can realize them. Don't make too big jumps, make them in smaller steps. And every day ask yourself the way how I am behaving right now, the things that I am doing right now. Are they going to bring me here where I wanted to go actually just one week ago when I made the plan? And when you say, no, at the moment it's not bringing me there, change it. Yeah? If there is something that is in our hands, then it is the way of paying attention to this type of, of of approach. You don't know where you're going to end. You don't know where this life is going to bring you. The only thing that we can do is to shape the direction. What you are going to meet along this way, along this journey, what you're going to meet when you walk that direction, you don't know. You don't know. But it's about shaping just the direction, not shaping the goal. It's shaping the direction. And there are two directions. One, embracing more. One, separating more. Yeah? The power lies in both. The power lies in both. Um, yeah. Como última pregunta, me he preguntado a Shifu cuál es su, su consejo, su recomendación para todas las personas que, pues que están pasando por un mal momento, que están pasando por pérdidas, por problemas de, de no ser felices, de vivir en, en esta rueda y esta espiral sin final. ¿Cuáles son sus consejos? Su, su, visión de vivir en tu centro y ser tu propio maestro, tu propio ídolo, tu, tu, tu mejor líder. Y dice que paso número uno, aceptar dónde estás, saber dónde estás, dónde comienzas, para que puedas realmente darte cuenta y quien te pueda guiar sepa dónde estás. Una vez sabes esto, trabajar cada día de forma que puedas preguntarte ¿Estoy haciendo lo que, me, lo que me va a llevar donde quiero ir? Y si la respuesta es no, cámbialo. Y si la respuesta es sí, síguelo. Porque dice que lo único que podemos hacer es dar forma a la dirección a la que vamos. Porque nunca sabemos dónde vamos a acabar. Ni lo que la vida nos va a presentar. Así que lo mejor es dar forma a la dirección. Y continuar el camino hacia donde vayamos, pero aceptando. Y dice que hay dos formas de enfocar esto. Una es abrazando más y otra es separándonos más y dice que el poder reside en las dos 
Chifu, thank you for the interview and thank you for these five days on the program. See you next year again, for sure. And thank you uh, to give us and inspire us and share your wisdom and knowledge with us. Yeah, and here, see, very, very easy. It's very clear what the Shaolin approach, what the Buddhist approach is. You do this. You bring together. You don't separate. So. See you next year. See you next year. Esto ha sido Disrupt Everything by Isla García. Encuentra el riesgo antes de que el riesgo te encuentre a ti.